teammates are going to keep you alive, and that's what Goose has done in this situation. And they're really, really relying on him to do the damage too, because if Maokai did, you know, he's not, he's not building AP, so they really have no cap the damage source inside his cannon top line, so they're really relying on him. Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, you can see this distance battle. Right you can see Jack going down pretty easily there, probably not the best of it. But what you're seeing here is Atlanta going and then running out, right? He's not engaging in this fight. You know, you don't want to be engaging against two full HP uh, enemy champions when you guys are low from Dragon. Look at that gorgeous heal from Leona, saving uh, Vayne during that Requiem. So, of course, Atlanta, now that he has enough lifesteal from Riggles, you know, he's just going to keep on jungling. He, never pre he pretty much never has to leave, even though he doesn't have Meditate. So that's... You can see the strength here in Yi's jungle. You know, without, even though he doesn't have a lot of CC, it's more than made up for by Kennen, Maokai, and Leona's CC, and he'll still probably be able to effectively gank and effectively fight late game. So what you don't want to do with Yi, and we'll see this over the course of this game, is chase. I know it's tempting. I know your ult gives you a huge movement speed and attack speed boost. I know that you think you can catch them up and kill them. Catch up to them and kill them, rather. But you... You just... You can't do it. You're gonna get yourself in trouble. The, the Rambo style of you really goes to your head. And you just have to be so careful with how you choose to engage. You know, he's got a good engage here because he's got his teammates with him. He's got a lot of CC and they're able to, you know, remove Janice ult right there, force her summer heal out, and then they're just backing off. They're not gonna get these, these kills. But they have gotten a lot of summoners and and ults out of you know, the bottom lane there, and that's enough to keep control of that lane and force them to go back. And you'll see constantly throughout this game that Atlanta waits in these team fights. He waits for an opening. He waits for the perfect vector to move in and then engage. You know, he will be hanging back, waiting for the spells to go down, and then he will become the one-man cleanup crew that totally destroys Dignitas. While Maokai and Leona tank most of the damage and kind of get right into the thick of things. So again here, we're just going to see a little more uh, jungling. This is a pretty long game, so I'm going to speed it up and wear in when I can. Uh, you know, you're not going to see much here, just a little back and forth. So as we as we go here, you know, he's going to stop using Wuju style on red buff at this point, just so he always has it up in case he needs it, because with that Riggles and the higher level of Alpha Strike, he no longer needs that, you know, additional damage to quickly clear that camp. And right here, you know, he's just going to pick up some creeps from Void Lion, hold this lane so that the tower doesn't take any unnecessary damage. So here we are, and, you know, we're going to see a, the first dragon of the game and a fantastic flash in the that is going to save him from that Malphite ult. So, fortunately, he is going to unfortunately die and give the double buffs to Karthus, which was a pretty big mistake. He should have been more cognizant of that, even though Malphite did dive him a little bit. Um, good, it was pretty much just good coordination by Dignitas. You can't really account for that kind of aggression. And then he, you know, he started attacking the groups immediately again to gain life before the Requiem went down. So, you know, he dies, but at this point he picks up his zeal, and of course that's going to give you the extra critical you know, the attack speed and movement speed and crit chance that he really benefits from. And... You know, we're going to see an early dragon here, and really the advantage, uh, we'll see it in a minute, I suppose. Sorry, I've only seen this game a couple of times, guys. So we'll see a little, a little more jungling first, and then we might get to see that early dragon that I keep promising you. And early, by early I mean, you know, 17 or 18 minutes, so not early. Okay. So once it comes back up, you should be seeing that. In the meantime, um, let's talk about how you play. So, what you always want to do is if you're going to use your ult, you want to use your ult before you alpha strike, so you start hitting them with that boosted attack speed immediately. So, ult, then alpha strike, then go in, so you're not wasting your time once you're actually next to them, you know, not hitting them with that bonus attack speed. And... Also, you, when you ult, so as you may know, if you kill somebody with your 
when your ult is up, it will refresh all your cooldowns. So what you want to do is ult, use Wuju style to double your Wuju style bonus. And uh, right here, hold on, we're going to slow this one down a bit. So we'll talk about that in a second. But you see how he went in and then immediately runs out once he sees the actual fight engaging and waits for Maokai and Leona to come in to take the damage. So the focus is now going down on them. And you can see Atlantic just running off to the side here, not hitting the, not, not being in the fight, not sitting in Karthus' defile, just simply sitting here and waiting for his teammates to take most of the damage and spells. You see Gatling Gun is now down, he doesn't have to worry about that anymore, and Vayne has done a good job of it. So at this point, we're going to see them running in to clean up the fight, and he being very, very useful in helping his allies to take down his few remaining members of Dignitas. You see a nice Malphite ult right there, but it's not quite enough to kill anybody. Vayne survives with 5 HP. And then they're going to take this again, the second dragon of the game. And really uncontested. So, a terrible fight. You know, they went down four kills there for none and lost the dragon. Pretty brutal. Um, anyway, so what, was I, what I was saying about Wuju style is that when you ult, and when you use Wuju style, you're going to ult and then use it so you get the double damage increase from having it as your active. Now, when your cooldowns refresh while you're ulting, because it lasts for 10 seconds, but remember that once those 10 seconds are up, you do not have any bonus damage for the next 10 seconds. So when it refreshes and you get that passive back, you will actually be doing triple damage for the rema remainder of those 10 seconds. So if you kill somebody with Wuju style, you will then have the remainder of the time with triple damage if you do not activate it again. You don't get quadruple damage if you activate it again. It just refreshes the timer on the double damage. So, ult, Wuju style, kill somebody, do not use Wuju style again. Keep it on or off cooldown. Just don't press it again because that way you get the triple damage for the remaining time and that's the way you can maximize your damage as ye. Okay? Okay. So, right now we have Atlanta. You can see he picked up that BF sword, and he's going to be building it into IE, but not before that Quicksilver Sash that I mentioned earlier. And, you know, he's just going to continue to farm these buffs. He really hasn't had any counter jungling threat at all from Nocturne. You know, we don't have any of these buffs to this here. And uh, we're going to be... You know, he thought he could get up there in time, but too bad the gank hit before he could actually make it up there, so he just went and cleared out that red camp uh, before heading up there. That's a great use of his time. And uh, right here, you see another decision. You know, he's not really going to commit on these guys. You know, all he does is use his Alpha Strike to clear out the wave. And another unfortunate record. Uh, but he uses the Alpha Strike to clear out the wave in front of the tower, and then sits there and meditates while they attack him. This is not the kind of view that you normally see. He's not being hyper-aggressive. He is being very prudent and choosy about when he chooses to engage. And that is almost never in a situation where he is... It is never in this game, actually, in a situation where he is, uh, you know, in a 1v2 situation. Or really even down in terms of team members. Uh, it usually doesn't turn out well for you as you when you do that. You know, 1v1 is good, he's a great duelist, but if somebody else comes, he's not like, let's say, Aurelia, where you're going to be able to survive and escape if somebody else comes. I mean, if Yi come, if, you're, if your ult runs out with Yi and somebody else shows up to a duel that you're fighting, a 1v1, you're probably going to die. So just keep that in mind. You know, you know, Unless you know where everybody is on the map, probably not the best idea to 1v1 somebody. So, in any case, you know, he's going to be heading down there, he's going to continue to farm. He's doing an excellent job of farming. You can see his 146 right now. He's easily keeping up with both his top and, uh, his top. And he isn't, you know, he, you'll see him eventually surpass everybody on Dignitas except for Cutie Pie in terms of CS. And for a jungler, that's phenomenal. And that really speaks to Yi's ability. So let's talk here about Yi, how, what utility and what skills Yi brings to a team. So as you can see here, you know, 
Atlanta triggered these Highlander, his ult, and attack that turret, which is exactly what you should be doing with me. You know, he's very fast, especially with Zeal and his ult, and Phantom Dancer later. And you should be running around the map and pushing when you can. But instead of switching targets to kill Tarkus, instead of staying at that tower for a few more hits, he, he realized that, hey, you know, somebody's here now. Even though I used my ult, which has a, you know, 75 second cooldown, I need to get out of here before anything else happens. And it's that kind of deceptive play that Atlanta has really mastered with Yi that I haven't seen from any other, you know, Yi player, really. I mean, we don't see a lot of Yi at the competitive level uh, like right now, although I think we will see more situationally with teams that feature this kind of, you know, non blue dependent uh, heavy CC lineup, you know, when you can get away with maybe last game of year or something like that. And so, you know, you really just want to, if that's Yi's advantage, to be able to push towers and be highly mobile, if somebody comes, just leave. They're not going to be able to follow you very quickly. They're not going to be able to take out towers as fast as you can. You know, just go to a different lane and try your luck there. Eventually, you will find a chink in the air. And again, going back to Atlanta's caution here. You know, he saw Karthus uh, kind of swoop around into their jungle there, and he, you can tell he's pinging it right now, and he is not face-checking anything. He is not even going anywhere close to that jungle because he doesn't want to be anywhere close to Karthus or deal with that problem whatsoever by himself. You know, Yi, despite his uh, phenomenal damage output abilities and his talents as a duelist, you know, you never... You know, people don't play AD carries, the other glass cannon characters, you know, the same way that they seem to have this syndrome with you that just causes them to chase people endlessly. And something about this character really brings that out of people, unfortunately. So it's refreshing to see in this game somebody else doing something a little different. So in any case, you can see this early Negatron Cloak here uh, that will be turned into that Quicksilver Sash so he can deal with these four exhausts, which must be annoying him to no end at this point in the game. And he'll just keep farming for the moment. So we might speed this up a bit for a second. Sorry if it's a little jittery, guys, you know. It's not one of those things you can really do anything about, but it's better than watching a, uh, you know, 40-minute game where a lot of farming is happening. So, you know, we have this little back and forth here, back and forth, and they're in really good position, actually. You know, you got Vayne and Kennen up here, safely out of AoE harm way, and you have, you know, your two tanks sitting there in the bush, waiting while Yi is looking for that attack angle from the side. You know, they're not going to be able to do much with this at this point in time, but they are just going to make sure that Dignitas doesn't get a dragon, and Dignitas is going to make sure that Goose doesn't get that dragon, at least not without a fight. So really cautious play overall from both teams in this game. And we are going to speed up for a second so we can see what is happening over this dragon. So they're trying to do it, you know, they've got it down to about half. But they are getting cut off. Corky is currently pretty cut off in the team. This is not the best positioning for Dignitas. And one of the things that the positive thing is, you know, with this, because he will he will attack as soon as he comes out of the Alpha Strike. And because his Alpha Strike is currently has a 60% chance to deal the 400 bonus magic damage, you know, he's a great choice for trying to steal barons, trying to steal dragons, and unfortunately he won't get it here, but if you can get it low and you can Alpha Strike it and can get that proc on the Riggles, or just because Yi does so much damage, just get that last hit in, you know, he can really easily take your, take your, uh, your global objectives. So you can see here, Malphite lands and hold on the two tanks, which is pretty bad. But as you see, he is staying out to the side and going in only after that ult has gone off. Leona's ult hits a bunch of them, who hits Karthus and uh, Malphite here. And then he just does a kind of quick drive by on the squishy, ignores Malphite, and then heals off to the side to deal with this ult. Okay, this is great E play. You come in, you ult, you do a drive-by on their, you know, on their squishies, and then you just hunt down the remaining members of that team. Ignoring Malphite the whole way, who no longer has an ult or any way to reasonably CC you, uh, since you threw that shard out. An ally has been slain. 
And now, now ye players, now is the time that you can chase people. When you have your AD and AP carries like kind of backing you up, when you have your team behind you, when they're down and you know where their entire team is, you know, only one person left alive.